Call it the other brisket. Call it the biggest, baddest cut of a steer. Simply define a clod as part of a beef shoulder. Today, I'm spit roasting it low and slow on a wood-burning rotisserie. This is your beef shoulder clod, 20 pounds of pure beefy awesomeness. The fat side will keep the clod moist during spit roasting. And the meat side is loaded with flavorful muscles. First thing you want to do is make the rub. It starts with equal parts coarse sea salt, freshly ground black pepper, hot pepper flakes, granulated garlic, and ground cumin. Mix these ingredients with your fingers, breaking up any lumps in the spices. Now sprinkle the rub over the clod. Now the next step is to tie the shoulder clod into a cylindrical roast. Take six lengths of butcher string. Slide the first string under the clod, about two inches in, loop it over, and the tie is like this. You loop over once, you loop over a second time, pull tight, and then point both your fingers towards your navel. Loop the far string over your finger, bring it under, loop it through, and pull tight. This is a very handy slip knot for tying a roast. There's your neatly trussed shoulder clod ready for spitting and spit roasting. So turn it around, take the rotisserie spit, and run it through the center of the shoulder clod. And insert the prongs into the meat twist tight and insert the other prong on the rotisserie spit. Press it in snugly and again secure the prong. Just use a fork and get some extra leverage. Now you're in business. Now to the grill. To spit roast the shoulder clod I'm using a Kalamazoo gaucho grill. Insert the spit, fix it in the socket. Then raise the rotisserie by turning this flywheel. The way you set up the fire, a couple logs on the far side, a couple logs on the near side. I'm using oak. This is an indirect fire, obviously. No heat underneath the clod. A lot of wood smoke. So you could think of this as smoking on a rotisserie. Then lower your beef shoulder clod. I'm going to be about 18 inches above the burning logs and switch on the rotisserie. Cooking time for a clod this size will be about five hours. Check your logs from time to time. Check your meat from time to time. Now I'll show you how to make the pico de gallo. Pico de gallo, rooster's beak literally, is the classic Tex-Mex salsa. It starts with diced tomatoes, to which you add sweet onion, Diced radish for crunch, diced jalapenos for heat, chopped fresh cilantro for pungency, freshly squeezed lime juice for tartness, a pinch of salt, and pepper. Mix these ingredients together. Yes, the Project Fire Pico de Gallo comes with a twist. We're going to smoke it. So first, Cover the bowl with plastic wrap, leaving just one edge uncovered. I filled a handheld smoker with oak wood sawdust. Light the sawdust, and when you have a clear stream of smoke, insert the hose in the bowl with the pico de gallo. Fill the bowl with wood smoke, switch the smoker off, cover tightly, and let the vegetables absorb the smoke for four to five minutes. The advantage of using a handheld smoker, this is a cold smoke, so you keep your vegetables cold and crisp. 
It's been five hours. Behold the beef shoulder clod. So I'll switch off the motor, check the internal temperature. If you like your beef medium, you'd be looking for about 145 to 150. Well done like a brisket, more like 180, 190. To carve the beef shoulder clod, simply slice it crosswise using a long, thin carving knife. You can see how moist and juicy the clod looks. Now here's how I like to eat the shoulder clod. Take a slice of Texas toast. This is buttered grilled garlic bread with grated Parmesan cheese. Then lay a slice of beef on top and a spoonful of pico de gallo. Let's see how we did. Mm. This beef is so smoky, so tender, so beefy. It's like the perfect fusion of smoky Texas brisket and succulent prime rib. I love the crunch of the Texas toast and the smoky succulence of the salsa.